Yesterday morning I left my husband after 30 years. And um, Yesterday morning? Yes. And I knew that it was something I needed to do because right. I was in an unloving situation and I knew that I no longer really loved him and so I wasn't living in truth. Yep. But it was still very hard and it was still very sad. Yeah. Which I'm obviously still feeling. Yeah. Um, and then I came here and you're talking about soulmates. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I just have a couple of questions. Why is it so hard? And why is it so sad? And also, um, a discussion we were having in the ladies yesterday yeah. <laughs> was... <laughs> not with me, obviously. <laughs> no, obviously not with you. Yeah. And um, nobody would ask, ask the question, so I said, I will. Yeah. If you have a longing for your soulmate and you know who your soulmate is, yeah. but they're married, is that unloving? Yes, so that's brought up quite a number of questions. The problem with a soulmate discussion, if I can, uh, I'm going to answer this question in a fairly long-winded way, okay? Uh, so sorry about that for those of you who want to ask further questions. Um, the problem with the soulmate discussion is that we often go a number of different ways with it. And when we go, one, one way we can go with it is, all right, we feel we're not currently in a relationship that's with our soulmate, right? That might be one way we go with it. And so once we go that way, like that we're not in this relationship with our soulmate, we then have a, have a choice of what we want to do uh, and what, what are we going to do. My suggestion, though, is rather than focusing on the soulmate issue in your current relationship, is to just focus on the love issue in your current relationship, right? Because, because at the end of the day, if you're with a person and it's not love, then it's some other emotional reason, right? So, so, so let's say I'm the male in the relationship, right? And here's the woman in the relationship. Not Mary, because I'm going to leave this woman. And, uh, <laughs> and I decide... Um, I decide that actually either I do not love this woman anymore or this woman does not love me anymore even though I'm still in love with her. Right? Now if that happens, immediately from God's perspective the bond between us has broken because every bond from God's perspective is a love-based bond. So. Any true bond is really just a love-based bond from God's perspective. Any other bond that we have with any person is just usually, as we talked about yesterday, an addictive bond, right? an addiction, which is, and remember an addiction is actually the satisfaction of an unhealed emotion that's out of harmony with love. So the addiction might be, I need to feel secure. So that's the addiction. And that comes from this unsatisfied emotion that I don't want to release inside of me, which is I feel very unsafe and insecure unless a man's looking after me or a woman's looking after me. An addiction might be I need someone to cook and clean for me. It can be a simple addiction. Many men their entire life have not cooked or cleaned. And it might sound a bit strange, but it's true. I've met many of them, right? They've never cooked or cleaned because they went straight from home living with mum who cooked and cleaned for them and straight into a relationship where the woman cooked and cleaned for them. Right? And they never have even cooked and cleaned. They don't even really know how to cook a meal for themselves, many of them. Now in many countries this is the case where whole populations of men don't even know how to cook for themselves. So one of their addictions is obviously going to be needing the woman to do it for them. Does that make sense? Just a simple addiction like that, which comes from an unhealed emotion where they're not willing to take responsibility for their own life and their own, uh, and their, their own body even. It's a big emotional injury actually that drives that. So we have, let's say, an addiction. The addiction causes us to remain connected to the person. From God's perspective though, if I don't love this person and I don't passionately desiring this person and this person it doesn't really matter whether they passionately desire me or not. If I just don't passionately desire that person and love that person, then I have at this point two things to do. One is that I could work through the emotional injury-based reasons as to why I no longer passionately desire the person at one point I must have. 
perhaps, passionately desired. Does that make sense? We have to let them in. They obviously needed the door, those spirits. Obviously. <laughs> No, it's, it's just a bit of breeze coming in, <laughs> so I'm just, I'm just joking. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, do you understand that? Like, so, if I don't passionately desire this person, my first option is to actually look at some emotional reasons of why I might not passionately desire them. Now, one emotional reason might be that this person has done something in the past in our relationship which has caused me to be in a state of fear or anger about the relationship. So this person might have cheated on me or they might have flirt, flirted with other men or they might have done something like that, right? Which has caused me to have certain emotional responses inside of myself and then as a result of those emotional responses inside of myself, I've shut down myself towards them. Right? So instead of releasing the emotion, as would we do if we were on the divine love path, we have this habit instead of closing down our emotion, staying in the relationship, but fear we have this hurt in us about the relationship. Does that make sense? And so that person, I could be blocked towards that person just because of that one issue, that there is this anger in me or frustration in me or fear in me about what they've done maybe even 10 years ago or 15 years ago. It could be something a long term like that and often is. My suggestion before you ever leave anybody in a relationship is to start addressing the issues like that. So if there is an issue in the past where the person's cheated or the person's done something that has caused a lot of like blockages in yourself, a lot of shutdown, let's say they've been a little bit abusive in the past or maybe when they get drunk they get angry with you all the time or those kind of things. My suggestion is to deal with every one of those issues in truth, remember the three things. Truth is such an important thing. Do with it in truth and in humility, right? In humility would say, all right, that's my law of attraction. I need to deal with something inside of myself emotionally as to what went on there. And in truth, I would speak to the other person and say, like, I am still upset with the fact that you did that. Right? I am still angry about that or I'm still sad about that. I'm still have some grief and what I've done is I've blocked myself off from you emotionally now because of that. I realise that's my issue and I need to work through that but I don't feel that you are even sorry for what you did, that if that might be the feeling you have and so forth. So explain what's going on with the person and try to work through the issue with them. Now in the attempt of trying to work through the blocked emotion with them, you, it will become very clear very rapidly whether the person wants to do that with you or not. Right? Now if the person doesn't want to do that with you, it, it, it will become very obvious that they have no desire to actually deal with this particular thing in truth and therefore you're going to have to work through the issue yourself at some point and uh, by yourself because if you want to be close to God you're going to have to work through this issue whether the other person's sorry for what they did or not, right? You're still going to have to work through the issue. But then you'll have to start looking if, if they are getting angry in return back at you or they're getting like a pressuring or controlling or manipulative back in return with you, what are you going to do then? Obviously that's not loving behaviour either and you would have to start to address that issue. Does that make sense? So. In starting to address that issue, it would become very clear over time whether you should be with this person or not. Right? But if there is no love, remember love is the real bond between the two of you. If you know that you are no longer in love with this person, from God's perspective the bond is broken. If you know that that person no longer loves you, then from God's perspective the bond is broken. It doesn't matter whether you've got a marriage certificate and it doesn't matter how long that marriage certificate has stood for, the bond is broken. Now you have one of two choices. You can re-establish the bond of love by working through it in truth and in humility and in love with the person or you can separate. That's your choice really, isn't it, in the end. Now, the problem is that a lot of people are going to then say about me that, oh yeah, you know, he went along to, or she went along to AJ's sessions for a year, 
or in Joy's case, five months or six months or whatever, and look what she's done now. She's left her, her husband after 30 years of marriage, like AJ destroys marriages. Right? That's the next supposition that comes from that, right? Now, I know Joy doesn't personally feel that, but what, whenever Joy has asked me a personal question about relationships, I've always referred her back to this particular thing. What, what's about the love? You know, what, do, are you in love with this man? Is he loving towards you? And what's going on? And if you can deal with those issues, it will then become very plain whether this relationship can work even if you're soulmates or not. Now, if you know you are not soulmates, which is a lot different than hoping that you're not, or hoping that you are, right? If you know you are not soulmates, and in fact you know who your soulmate is, and you know that you're not in love with the person you're with, then why are you still there? And my suggestion is there will be a lot of emotional reasons why you're still there. So I'm not <coughs> suggesting you leave. What I'm suggesting is stick around and deal with those emotional reasons until you get to a point of making a decision inside of yourself as to what you should do. Right? Now, what might be some of the emotional reasons why I might stay with someone who I know doesn't love me? Well, one might be that I love them and I still feel that feeling for them. And so I stay with them, hoping. So what am I addicted to? Hope in the end. I'm hoping that they're going to love me at some point in the future. Right? And that if I do enough for them and if I please them enough and, I, and all that, eventually they'll come to see that I'm a nice guy and, and, and they'll love me. Or a nice woman and they'll love me. Now is that loving to yourself? Obviously not. So I would have to also in this question of love look at am I being loving to myself by staying here? If you know that your partner doesn't love you but you stay in the relationship, then there is obviously some quite strong emotional addictions to allow yourself to work through. Work through those addictions in the relationship if you can because you've attracted the relationship. It's a perfect time to work through them. Work through those addictions and when you come out the other side of those addictions and release them, it will become very plain to you whether it's a workable relationship or not. But the issue that we raised yesterday was, in fact, I was suggesting to you yesterday, there is a soulmate part of you. It's this soulmate side of you. When you start opening this soulmate side of you, what will happen is every other attraction that you've ever had will start to die. And when I say die, it's not like some kind of destruction that's terrible. You just no longer feel attracted to lots of different people anymore. There is only one person you end up being attracted to and that is your soul other half, your soul mate. And so what happens when that happens is you get into this state where you realise that there is only one kind of attraction that really has any long-term hunger for you, long-term longing for you and that is the hunger for your soul mate, the longing for your soul mate. Now when you get into that state it will become very obvious to you whether the person you're currently with is your soulmate or not. Until that point, until you actually have a soulmate longing, you are not going to know whether the person you're with is your soulmate or not. Even if they are your soulmate, you still won't know until that part of your soul is opened. And this is why it's so good to use, to be in your current relationship and work through the issues until you get to the point where you know that this isn't right. And when you know it isn't right, obviously that is the time for you to leave. And it doesn't matter what anybody else around you says. Like The religious people around you might say, no, you married for life, you've got to stick with that. Your husband or wife might say, oh, hang on a sec, but I still love you. That doesn't matter either. Because at the end of the day, when you know inside of yourself that you no longer have love, uh, you know, a desire, a loving, and, and by the way, this includes a sexual desire for your partner, then there is something wrong going on inside of yourself that you're shutting down and you need to look at that. Because at the end, we do need to have this strong emotional sexual desire for our partner that we're living with. And if we don't have that, we need to spend a lot of time looking at why. Right? 
Because when two people in a relationship don't desire every, each other in a passionate way, it actually shuts each person down emotionally in the relationship. Now, any of you who have lived in that kind of relationship know that, right? As soon as you start detuning from your partner sexually and emotionally, why are you now in the relationship? And now it just becomes like almost like a friendship that you could have with a guy down the street sort of thing, isn't it? And once the sexual relationship stops and the emotional relationship stops, what's going on now? It's really just like a workable solution to some kind of problem that you're still not letting go of inside of yourself. So my suggestion is allow yourself to understand that your life will change as you follow the divine love path. Right? It's going to change and it's not going to be my fault. <laughs> many of you think it is my fault and many other people who watch you doing what you're doing think it's my fault. But it actually isn't going to be my fault. It's going to be God's truth resonating in your soul so much that eventually you feel you can do certain things and can't do other things. And then you'll feel drawn into doing that yourself. And, and I'll have nothing to do with that process aside from the on occasion that you might even ask me what's the loving thing to do and I'll just ask you some questions. I, I am not recommending here to anybody to leave their per, the person they're with or to stay. What I'm asking you to do is to live in love and to do that in a passionate way. And if you can't do that in a passionate way, look at the emotional reason why you can't that's inside of yourself and then you'll address a lot of the issues. Now obviously for Joy you've been working through this issue, you've felt there's a disconnection of love between yourself and your partner. Is that right? Do you, do you mind? Yeah, that would be true. That would be true? Yeah. And so that's caused you then to go, okay, what am I doing in this relationship when it's not loving? And part of the question you ask is why am I then grieving the fact that I've left the relationship? Well, oftentimes when we act in truth, once we realise the truth and we actually act upon the truth, all of the addictions start getting triggered one after the other quite rapidly. 